Chapter Fifteen Ozma's Prisoner. The boy was so bewildered by this calamity that he made no resistance at all. He knew very well he was guilty, but it surprised him that Ozma also knew it. He wondered how she had found out so soon that he had picked the six-leaved clover. He handed his basket to Scraps and said, "'Keep that until I get out of prison. If I never get out, take it to the crooked magician to whom it belongs.' The shaggy man had been gazing earnestly in the boy's face, uncertain whether to defend him or not. But something he read in Ojo's expression made him draw back and refuse to interfere to save him. The shaggy man was greatly surprised and grieved, but he knew that Ozma never made mistakes, and so Ojo must really have broken the law of Oz. The soldier with the green whiskers now led them all through the gate and into a little room built in the wall. Here sat a jolly little man, richly dressed in green, and having around his neck a heavy gold chain, to which a number of great golden keys were attached. This was the guardian of the gate, and at the moment they entered his room he was playing a tune upon a mouth-organ. "'Listen,' he said, holding up his hand for silence. I've just composed a tune called The Speckled Alligator. It's in patch time, which is much superior to ragtime, and I've composed it in honor of the patchwork girl who has just arrived. How did you know I had arrived? asked Scraps, much interested. It's my business to know who's coming, for I'm the guardian of the gate. Keep quiet while I play you the speckled alligator. It wasn't a very bad tune, nor a very good one, but all listened respectfully while he shut his eyes and swayed his head from side to side and blew the notes from the little instrument. When it was all over, the soldier with the green whiskers said, Guardian, I have here a prisoner. Good gracious! A prisoner? cried the little man, jumping up from his chair. Which one? Not the shaggy man. No, uh, this boy. Ah, uh, I hope his fault is as small as himself, said the guardian of the gate. But what can he have done, and what made him do it? Can't say, replied the soldier. All I know is that he has broken the law. But no one ever does that. Then he must be innocent, and soon will be released. I hope you are right, guardian. Just now I am ordered to take him to prison. Get me a prisoner's robe from your official wardrobe. The guardian unlocked a closet and took from it a white robe, which the soldier threw over Ojo. It covered him from head to foot, but had two holes just in front of his eyes, so he could see where to go. In this attire the boy presented a very quaint appearance. As the guardian unlocked a gate leading from his room into the streets of the Emerald City, the shaggy man said to Scraps, "'I think I shall take you directly to Dorothy, as the Scarecrow advised, and the Glass Cat and the Woozy may come with us. Ojo must go to prison with the soldier with the green whiskers, but he will be well treated, and you need not worry about him.' "'What will they do with him?' asked Scraps. That I cannot tell. Since I came to the land of Oz, no one has ever been arrested or imprisoned, until Ojo broke the law. Seems to me that girl ruler of yours is making a big fuss over nothing, remarked Scraps, tossing her yarn hair out of her eyes with a jerk of her patched head. I don't know what Ojo has done, but it couldn't be anything very bad, for you and I were with him all the time. The shaggy man made no reply to this speech, and presently the patchwork girl forgot all about Ojo in her admiration of the wonderful city she had entered. They soon separated from the munchkin boy, who was led by the soldier with the green whiskers down a side street toward the prison. Ojo felt very miserable and greatly ashamed of himself. But he was beginning to grow angry, because he was treated in such a disgraceful manner. 
instead of entering the splendid emerald city as a respectable traveller who was entitled to a welcome and to hospitality he was being brought in as a criminal handcuffed and in a robe that told all he met of his deep disgrace ojo was by nature gentle and affectionate and if he had disobeyed the law of oz it was to restore his dear unc nucky to life his fault was more thoughtless than wicked but that did not alter the fact that he had committed a fault at first he had felt sorrow and remorse but the more he thought about the unjust treatment he had received unjust merely because he considered it so the more he resented his arrest blaming ozma for making foolish laws and then punishing folks who broke them only a six-leaved clover a tiny green plant growing neglected and trampled underfoot what harm could there be in picking it ojo began to think ozma must be a very bad and oppressive ruler for such a lovely fairyland as oz the shaggy man said the people loved her but how could they the little munchkin boy was so busy thinking these things which many guilty prisoners have thought before him that he scarcely noticed all the splendor of the city streets through which they passed whenever they met any of the happy smiling people the boy turned his head away in shame although no one knew who was beneath the robe by and by they reached a house built just beside the great city wall but in a quiet retired place it was a pretty house neatly painted and with many windows before it was a garden filled with blooming flowers the soldier with the green whiskers led ojo up the gravel path to the front door on which he knocked a woman opened the door and seeing ojo in his white robe exclaimed oh, goodness me a prisoner at last but what a small one soldier the size doesn't matter tolly diggle my dear the fact remains that he is a prisoner said the soldier and this being the prison and you the jailer it is my duty to place the prisoner in your charge true come in then and i'll give you a receipt for him they entered the house and passed through a hall to a large circular room where the woman pulled the robe off from ojo and looked at him with kindly interest the boy on his part was gazing around him in amazement for never had he dreamed of such a magnificent apartment as this in which he stood the roof of the dome was of colored glass worked into beautiful designs the walls were paneled with plates of gold decorated with gems of great size and many colors and upon the tiled floor were soft rugs delightful to walk upon the furniture was framed in gold and upholstered in satin brocade and it consisted of easy chairs divans and stools in great variety also there were several tables with mirror tops and cabinets filled with rare and curious things in one place a case filled with books stood against the wall and elsewhere ojo saw a cupboard containing all sorts of games may i stay here a little while before i go to prison asked the boy pleadingly why this is your prison replied tolly diggle and in me behold your jailer take off those handcuffs soldier for it is impossible for anyone to escape from this house i know that very well replied the soldier and at once unlocked the handcuffs and released the prisoner the woman touched a button on the wall and lighted a big chandelier that hung suspended from the ceiling for it was growing dark outside then she seated herself at a desk and asked what name ojo the unlucky answered the soldier with the green whiskers unlucky ah that accounts for it said she what crime breaking a law of oz all right there's your receipt soldier and now i am responsible for the prisoner i'm glad of it for this is the first time i've ever had anything to do in my official capacity remarked the jailer in a pleased tone it's the same with me tolly diggle 
laughed the soldier, but my task is finished, and I must go and report to Ozma that I've done my duty like a faithful police force, a loyal army, and an honest bodyguard, as I hope I am. Saying this, he nodded farewell to Tollydiggle and Ojo, and went away. Now then, said the woman briskly, I must get you some supper, for you are doubtless hungry. What would you prefer? Planked whitefish? Omelette with jelly? Or mutton chops with gravy? Ojo thought about it. Then he said, I'll take the chops, if you please. Very well. Amuse yourself while I'm gone. I won't be long. And then she went out by a door and left the prisoner alone. Ojo was much astonished, for not only was this unlike any prison he had ever heard of, but he was being treated more as a guest than a criminal. There were many windows, and they had no locks. There were three doors to the room, and none were bolted. He cautiously opened one of the doors, and found it led into a hallway, but he had no intention of trying to escape. If his jailer was willing to trust him in this way, he would not betray her trust. And moreover, a hot supper was being prepared for him, and his prison was very pleasant and comfortable. So he took a book from the case and sat down in a big chair to look at the pictures. This amused him, until the woman came in with a large tray and spread a cloth on one of the tables. Then she arranged his supper, which proved the most varied and delicious meal Ojo had ever eaten in his life. Tolly Diggle sat near him while he ate, sewing on some fancy work she held in her lap. When he had finished, she cleared the table, and then read to him a story from one of the books. "'Is this really a prison?' he asked, when she had finished reading. "'Indeed it is,' she replied. "'It is the only prison in the land of Oz.' "'And I am a prisoner?' "'Bless the child, of course!' "'Then why is the prison so fine, and why are you so kind to me?' he earnestly asked. Tolly Diggle seemed surprised by the question, but she presently answered, "'We consider a prisoner unfortunate. He is unfortunate in two ways, because he has done something wrong and because he is deprived of his liberty. Therefore we should treat him kindly, because of his misfortune.' for otherwise he would become hard and bitter, and would not be sorry he had done wrong. Ozma thinks that one who has committed a fault did so because he was not strong and brave. Therefore she puts him in prison to make him strong and brave. When that is accomplished, he is no longer a prisoner, but a good and loyal citizen, and every one is glad that he is now strong enough to resist doing wrong. You see, it is kindness that makes one strong and brave, and so we are kind to our prisoners. Ojo thought this over very carefully. I had an idea, said he, that prisoners were always treated harshly to punish them. That would be dreadful, cried Tolly Diggle. Isn't one punished enough in knowing he has done wrong? Don't you wish, Ojo, with all your heart, that you had not been disobedient and broken a law of Oz? I—I I hate to be different from other people, he admitted. Yes, one likes to be respected as highly as his neighbors are, said the woman. When you are tried and found guilty, you will be obliged to make amends in some way. I don't know just what Ozma will do to you, because this is the first time one of us has broken a law— but you may be sure she will be just and merciful. Here in the Emerald City people are too happy and contented ever to do wrong, but perhaps you came from some faraway corner of our land, and having no love for Ozma carelessly broke one of her laws. Yes, said Ojo, I've lived all my life in the heart of a lonely forest, where I saw no one but dear Unc Nunky. I thought so, said Tolly Diggle. But now we have talked enough, so let us play a game until bedtime. End of chapter 15